Did they tell you about it? Uh, they did admit it, but oh. can you help fix it? Oh yeah, that's no problem. I'll show you how. This is my hell. <laughs> Julie Andrews with Diane Sawyer. The untold story of the sound of music starts now. Tonight, from Salzburg, Austria, an ABC News event, Julie Andrews returns 50 years later for the untold story of the sound of music. Here now, from that famous mountaintop, Diane Sawyer. Good evening and welcome, as tonight we take you on an amazing journey beginning right here on the famous hill at the foot of the Alps, where 50 years later, you can still hear the sound of music. Come with us now to the ancient town with the towering castles. At the foot of the mountains with the rolling river. It's where Mozart was born. 150,000 people live in Salzburg. But 6.5 million tourists arrive here every year. And most are in search of the story that reminds you to find your own dream. Families come to reenact the joyful dance, shot for shot. We see fans imagining themselves inside their favorite scenes. You know, the ones that lift the heart. On the Sound of Music tour buses, young and old dress as their favorite characters, singing along. From all over the planet to that little gazebo where Liesel and Roth were 16 going on 17. <laughs> there is someone else who has arrived in Salzburg, the actress with the astonishing voice, the luminous face. 50 years later, Julie Andrews, 79. She meets up with us at a treasured place, a terrace by a river filled with so many memories. Isn't it pretty? I think this was actually my favorite location. Her favorite location. In the movie, this house was used as the set for the backyard of the Von Trapp home. It's the place where a high-spirited nun frees seven children from stultifying rules. Dressed in play clothes, out of curtains, they go canoeing, excited when their father comes home. At least, that's what I remember after falling in love with the movie long ago. But Julie Andrews remembers something else, what was really happening outside the frame. Watch these rarely seen home movies shot by the parents of the children. Just as we were about to shoot, the second AD came up to me and said, can I just tell you something? The little one doesn't swim. <laughs> I said, w uh, w so could you fall forward from the boat and get her as quickly as possible? I said, well, yes. And of course I fell backwards, not forward. Because the boat was rocking. I've seen... You just see a pair of feet disappearing. <laughs> I and saw I... some tape of her coming up going. Yeah, well, yes, and people were diving in to get her. She was very brave. You did four takes. Four times they have to fall in the water, dry off, fall again. Behind the scenes, we see Julie Andrews huddled in towels, a bucket used to get her wet for retakes. Did you get dried well, I, off? No, I, I know up here mm -hmm. they kept wetting us down to match. <laughs> and somehow all this work and craft began to shape a message about courage, choosing hope, even when your life gets hard. A message that would arc across every generation. 50 years 50 later. 50 years. It's unbelievable, Diane. I do not know where the last 20 years went. I could believe 30, but not 50, surely. It's a joke. The sound of music isn't just about being joyful. It's about achieving joy. It's about... Finding joy, yeah. What will my future be? I wonder. The work on the film had actually begun months earlier in Hollywood. There were three months of rehearsal. Yes. Everything will turn Laying down the songs. Yes, well, everything. So by the time director Robert Wise brought his crew of 250 people to Austria, they were ready to work six days a week, dawn to midnight. 6.30 in the morning, you were in hair and makeup and mm -hmm. getting your hair colored repeatedly all the time. Yes. I thought I detected different colors of occasion. <laughs> well, maybe you did. That was kind of by an accident. Uh, Bob thought 
but maybe some highlights would be great. And the highlights came out kind of orange, and so they decided, <laughs> oh, forget that, just be blonde all over. And here is another rare piece of video out of the vault. Listen. Every morning you greet me. This is the real singing voice of Christopher Plummer, singing Edelweiss himself. Now, listen to the sound from the final movie. Every morning you greet me. Plummer now has the voice of a professional singer they brought in to help strengthen his notes. And Every scene in the movie, so difficult it had been sketched and timed in Hollywood, and no scene more arduous than the one they were going to try to shoot high up in the Alps on that mountain filled with music. Tourists search for it, but it's not listed in any guidebook, so we set out to find it and take you there. So here's what we've heard. It's out of town that you can't find it on any Google map, so don't even bother trying. We drive west. Six miles later, we actually leave Austria and cross the border into Germany. Signs point in every direction, but no mention of the famous hill. And as we climb, our ears are popping. Those cows have got to mean something, right? The land here is privately owned by farmers, so reluctant to let outsiders in, the movie studio has to pay them to let our cameras up the path. So, here we go. Halfway up, sheep. Can you hear the chime? Hello. We keep going. It's steep and a little gooey from rain. A little mud. Okay. Wow, is this it? Is this it? Here we are. The view, exactly as it was a half a century ago. Though one thing is very different for us on the day we arrive. Even though it is a beautiful day today, it was not 50 years ago. In fact, it was rain, it was wind. The temperature's in the 50s. Everyone was freezing, and they only had the sun come out for about 20 minutes to get that shot. Turns out beautiful Austria is the 11th rainiest country on Earth. So I went to your mountain. I want to know how you did that. How I got up there? Oh, well, my. It rained a lot. The tarp over your head. Mm freezing cold, waiting for the clouds to part. I know. We actually went up the mountain in big open carts pulled by oxen. I would sit on top of all the camera equipment, and then they'd hoist me up, and up we'd go. Spoiler alert. Skip this part if you only want the movie magic in your head. But if you look closely here, for a moment, the sky is clear blue for a wide shot. Then, in the shot in the meadow, you can see clouds closing in. At times, the grass is yellow, but in the DVDs, they electronically paint it green. And those birch trees? If you're looking for those birch trees, you're not going to find them. They were brought in for the scene, then taken right back out. Something else you won't find here, that brook with the water that trips and falls over stones on its way. That was brought in by the movie studio, too. Plastic filled with water and vanished. And do you remember the scene where she's running back to the abbey, leans down, picks up her clothes, and goes in this direction? I'm telling you, it is steep. This is not easy. But on that day we were shooting on the mountain, we're lucky. We have small, silent drones getting the shot. Back in 1965, Julie Andrews was doing battle with a helicopter that kept blowing up a tornado of wind. This giant helicopter came at me sideways with a very brave cameraman hanging out the side where the door would be normally and the helicopter would shoot me and I'd come from one end of the field and he'd come from the other and I'd make that big turn and then he'd go around me to go back and start again and I'd run to the other end but every time he went around me the downdraft from the jets would fling me down into the grass. I heard that occasionally you curse like a sailor. I do. No, I do, and I did. <laughs> Quiet, please. But somehow, out of that duel with the helicopter, the nine takes, the long hours, and the cold. In 20 minutes of sunshine, 
the giant speakers up in the trees began playing that music. One was suddenly released, maybe, from, from waiting and waiting. I don't know. But these huge, big speakers in the trees were blasting this beautiful music. And for all of us, an indelible moment, celebrating the simple joy of being young and alive. Next, what well-known movie star was considered for the role of Maria and the secrets behind the scenes to Do Re Mi? What? When we come back. The world is filled with air. But for people with COPD, sometimes breathing air can be difficult. If you have COPD, ask your doctor about once daily Anoro Ellipta. It helps people with COPD breathe better for a full 24 hours. Anoro Ellipta is the first FDA approved product containing two long acting bronchodilators in one inhaler. Anoro is not for asthma. Anoro contains a type of medicine that increases risk of death in people with asthma. It is not known if this risk is increased in COPD. Anoro won't replace rescue inhalers for sudden COPD symptoms and should not be used more than once a day. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure. Tell your doctor if you have glaucoma, prostate or bladder problems or problems passing urine as Anoro may make these problems worse. Call your doctor right away if you have worsened breathing, chest pain, swelling of your mouth or tongue, problems urinating or eye problems, including vision changes or eye pain while taking the Noro. Nothing can reverse COPD. The world is filled with air, and a Noro is helping people with COPD breathe air better. Get your first prescription free at anoro.com. It's March. Time to seize the moment at your local Hyundai dealer. Right now, get a 2015 Elantra for just 0% APR for 60 months. Plus, get $1,500 March bonus cash. Take advantage of these limited-time offers and upgrade to the award-winning Elantra. But hurry, time is running out. The Hyundai Seize the Moment sales event ends March 31st. Seize your Elantra today and get $3,250.